Hey there once again YouTube, it is Ben Ferriolo, I'm back once again. We're going to take a look at the uh, seismicity that is still ongoing in the coastal volcanic field area in the Ridgecrest area of California. Now, uh, we, it got hit by magnitude 7.1, which they are now saying, here let me turn largest magnitude first on. The magnitude 7.1 they're saying is at 17 kilometers in depth, caused many structural fires and uh, some multiple injuries. Nobody died, thank God. And that just came just a day after the magnitude 6.4. And I just want you to see some real quick. Let's go back to newest first. And click seven days all magnitudes. And seismicity was generally calm in this area until the magnitude 6.4 happened. There were a few aftershocks, but look at how many they're reporting for this area in the past seven days. Again, most, almost all of this seismicity is only in the past few days since the magnitude 6.4. 3,137 earthquakes they are reporting. And remember, there are many other earthquakes that they just simply cannot report. And that doesn't just come from me. That comes from looking at the seismic data and also a statement they put out for Coastal Volcanic Field. They put out an alert posting, the first ever alert posting USGS has ever posted for the Coastal Volcanic Field area at least from what I have seen. Um, and we're going to take a look at that in just a second. They did not raise the alert level at all. But as you will see, it is possible that this is tectonic in nature. I mean, and look look at the straight and linear formation of these earthquakes um, with the magnitude 7.1 occurring pretty much right in the middle of all of these earthquakes. So we do know that this is definitely tectonic in origin, but it could kickstart some volcanic process and um, CVO or Calvo, California Volcano Observatory did say it kickstarted an earthquake swarm within the coastal volcanic field, which is this area right here. They have an active geothermal pumping operation in this area as well, which they drill uh, to about 1,000, 2,000 feet or something like that. And they let the steam come up. They inject water and let it turn to steam. And then it turns turbines to create energy for homes. And, um, so, yeah, very interesting activity. Uh, just in the past 24 hours, 1,457 earthquakes reported of all sizes. Yeah, very active, and they are expecting possibly another very large earthquake could occur, maybe even larger than the, than the 7.1, maybe even up to a magnitude 8, which would be unprecedented for, for this area. I mean, the magnitude 7.1 was strange enough. I mean, really, I didn't even think... And even the professionals didn't even think a fault this big even resided in this location at all. Unless this is like a cascade failure of all of these faults in this area going towards the northwest. But um, uh, Scott Wheeler from the NW Geology Guy, a link to his channel is in the description box below as usual. Um, he sent me a really good resource about the COSO magmatic system. And we're going to take a look at that in just a second and its relationship to the local tectonic activity. Yes, there's a high correlation and um, a response from the magma chamber when there is strong tectonic activity in the area. And we'll take a look at that publication in just a second. And here we are at the Coastal Volcanic Field Current Alerts. This is the first ever alert posting they have ever done for the Coastal Volcanic Field. And you'll see this right here. Let's search alert archives. Let's go to Volcano. Let's go to Coastal Volcanic Field where all this activity is taking place. Yes. The 6.4 and the 7.1 and all that activity is occurring on the southern end of the Coso volcanic field. The whole area is very volcanic. I mean, if you go on Google Earth, there are a lot of cinder cones, lava domes, and lava flows in this area that have erupted a long time ago. But it's supposedly been 40,000 years since the last eruption. Uh, see, one volcano update matching your search criteria. That is it. This is the first ever volcano update for the current alert status for Coso volcanic field ever done by USGS. An earthquake swarm started on the evening of July 5th at the southern margin of Coastal Volcanic Field in Inyo County, California. The swarm activity was triggered by a magnitude 4, a 5.4 earthquake at 9.19 p.m. Pacific time, located about 20 kilometers east-southeast of Little Lake, which the 5.4 itself was likely an aftershock of the 7.1 earthquake that occurred about an hour earlier, 17 kilometers north-northeast of Ridgecrest and south of the Coso area right on the edge of the volcanic field, guys. An average of about 30 earthquakes per hour have been detected since, most within the range of magnitude 1 to magnitude 3. No ground deformation indicative of volcanic activity has been detected, even though some of their GPS stations are not working in that area. And there's no imminent threat of an eruption. And, you know, that is that could be true right now. I don't know. We should just keep a close eye on the area just in case. 
The California Volcano Observatory will continue to monitor the situation for any sign of volcanic activity and provide updates as warranted. Yeah, very, very interesting, guys. The Coastal Volcanic Field is located on the eastern side of the Sierra Nevada at the northern end of the Mojave Desert, about 40 miles north of Ridgecrest. The field covers about 150 square miles, primarily within the Naval Air Weapons Station at China Lake, and is comprised of lava domes, lava flows, and cinder cones erupted over the past supposedly 250,000 years. The most recent eruption was about 40,000 years ago. Very interesting, guys. Very, very, very interesting that they did post an alert level update, the first ever, for Coastal Volcanic Field. Now, why don't we go to monitoring real quick, and you'll see the location of these earthquakes in relation to the volcanic field itself. Let's click monitoring. All right. Come on, buddy. Okay. So you see where the current swarm is taking place is right here. And man, this map is very glitchy if you try to go on here because there are so many earthquakes. I mean, just an insane amount. The swarm is breaking out right here. Here's Coastal Volcanic Field spread out about 150 square miles, guys. I mean, this whole area is Coastal Volcanic Field. So it occurred, the, all this earthquake activity occurred on the southern edge, on the southeastern edge of the volcanic field itself, even spreading far, far to the southeast and to the southwest as well, near Ridgecrest. Uh, look at 3,296 earthquakes. Woo-wee! We do have a few earthquakes popping up uh, just on the northwestern section of Coastal Volcanic Field, but the majority of the seismicity right now pr primarily is composed of aftershocks along this unknown fault that they didn't even know existed, um, and in the swarm area within the volcanic field itself. Now, the magma chamber resides right in this location. I thought it was farther to the south near Ridgecrest. It's not. It's up here, right in this location, right here. Basically, right where the seismicity and the current ongoing um, earthquake swarm is occurring. And it supposedly is uh, anywhere from, what was it, 2 to 5 kilometers in depth. So these earthquakes definitely are striking the magma chamber itself, basically. I mean, right on the edge of it, if not inside of it. I mean, it's just, uh, all this activity is very interesting. And I think that this could, all this force leading, and you can tell the majority of the force has been leading towards the northwest, up right towards the magma chamber, actually. Almost like a gun pointed at something, right? Um, so we're going to take a look at the seismic data for the recent earthquakes. Uh, there are too many to actually get into in depth, but you'll see how many are truly occurring. I mean, it, there are just so many earthquakes that they cannot report. It's just insane. And here we are at the Southern California Seismic Network. The Seals Valley uh, sequence started on July 4, 2019, and so far has included one strong 6.4 and one major 7.1. The closest large population center is the city of Ridgecrest with a population of 28,000 people. Maximum shaking levels are estimated to be violent in the epicentral region, and very strong shaking occurred over a 40-kilometer wide region near the epicenter that includes the city of Ridgecrest. Shaking was widely felt throughout California, including light to moderate ground shaking in Los Angeles, weak shaking in the San Francisco Bay Area, that's far to the northwest, and felt shaking extended at least as far east as Phoenix and as far north as Sacramento. And as you'll see their explanation right here, aftershocks are occurring over a 50 kilometer wide area with a cluster of activity approximately 25 kilometers northwest from the main shock about 10 kilometers to the southeast of the coastal geothermal field. Actually, it is pretty much within the geothermal field itself. As of July 5th, 2019, there have been nearly 3,000 aftershocks recorded in the full sequence, but, but, this significantly underestimates the total number of aftershocks as the processing system is saturated with data and smaller events in particular are not yet identified. So this number of 3,000 aftershocks probably can go up to, I'm going to say 10,000. I'm going to go out there on a limb. I'm going to say around 9,000, 10,000 aftershocks associated with these events and taking part of an earthquake swarm within, basically within the volcanic field at COSO. Ah, possible four shocks. There were nine events during the three days prior to the earthquake. The largest was a 4.0. Yes, there were four shocks. And there's a small chance that a larger quake could occur, larger than the 7.1, with the likelihood decreasing over time. And you can see right here the linear formation of the fault system right here and the fault system right here, which I believe they call a conjugated fault system. But up here we have an earthquake swarm. You see this black marking right here? This black area is an old lava flow. 
and the magma chamber resides basically right in this area where this earthquake storm is taking place. Very interesting, guys. Very, very interesting. And looks like seismicity is still ongoing. I don't think it's over yet. It could be. I'm hoping it's over soon, but I don't think so. Now, I want to put a thank you out there to Scott Wheeler, who sent this to me. Um, single chamber silicic magma system inferred from shear wave discontinuities of the crust and uppermost mantle, Coso Geothermal Area, California, by Charles Wilson, Craig Jones, and Hirsch Gilbert. Now, there are a few things I want you guys to notice. So according to seismic waveform tomography, which maps the inside of the Earth and can detect magma chambers, we do see there is likely a magma chamber in this location right here. I mean, it's not too... I mean, we know the magma chamber's there, but it's not... Uh, the resolution isn't too, too great, but we do know there's a magma chamber right in this location. Primarily, I'm going to guess probably right here, right in that location right there which coincidentally is basically right in this location right here, right on the edge of the earthquake swarm breaking out at the Coso Volcanic Field. Now here's a cross section. Now here is west and here's east. So basically if we were underground and there's a cross section of the magmatic system, we are looking to the north. Basically the earthquakes would be heading towards the northwest, so it would be heading towards this area right in that way. So basically a lot of the power is coming from where you're standing if you're watching this video towards the partial melt area right here. Depths on the left are in kilometers. Notice we have the partial melt zone, silica-rich melt. That's the magma chamber. That's the upper crustal magma chamber. Feeder dike for basalt flows. And we have mid-crustal decolement, which actually I don't know what that means. I have to do more research on that. Remember, I'm not a professional, guys. There's still a lot of things I don't understand. But we do see there's no large lower crustal reservoir. Notice there's a big space down here. Uh, there's small basaltic dikes uh, coming up from a possible upper mantle mafic reservoir. Yeah, there is possibly an upper... I mean, we already know the upper crustal reservoir does exist. We already know there's magma depth right underneath the surface. But there is possibly a mantle magma chamber around 35 kilometers in depth directly under this location. Which has me thinking... Could this be, the volcanic activity in the coastal area, could it be caused by a mantle plume? I'm thinking that's very possible. Let me know what you think below. Now, I know, guys, some of this may go right over your head, but just listen closely and try to understand this. I'll leave a link to this uh, publication in the description box below so you can read all this stuff for yourself about the coastal volcanic field and its magmatic system. Now, this is going to show you the correlation... The relationship to regional tectonics, which is very important given the activity that we have been seeing near the coastal volcanic field. We propose that extension in the uppermost crust, which is kind of near the surface, occurring on mapped faults is accommodated within the magma body at mid-crustal levels. This model requires surface faults to root into surface faults to root into the magma body, as has been inferred from unpublished active seismic profiles. Extension beneath the magma is unlikely to be localized directly under the magma body. Such extension would raise the moho many kilometers, depending on the amount of extension accommodated in this area. Instead, flow within the lower crust into the region under the magma body would combine with magmatic additions to accommodate extension and preserve the nearly flat moho observed in this study. Wow. Envisioned by Gans, 1987, for the Northern Basin and Range. As for the upper crust, widespread extension in the lower crust must root upward into the narrower deforming region of the magma chamber. The broadly deforming lower crust will be separated from the near rigid mid crust to the sides of the magma chamber by a zone with substantial shear. Now listen to this closely guys, listen very very close. Displacement across this zone would increase towards the magma body. That's interesting. So does that mean that the activity will increase towards the magma body, towards the northwest, from regional tectonics, which is what we are seeing in this area? Maybe. Let me know what you think about that. That's I think that's very interesting. More work needs to be done on the nature of the MCP conversion. But this conversion seems a possible candidate for such a mid-crustal decolement. Now, guys, this activity at Coastal Volcanic Field is going to help the professionals understand a lot of what is going on underneath the crust there and the volcanic system. 
In particular, its presence near the inferred base of the magma chamber and the increase in amplitude approaching the magma chamber seems a good fit to the character expected of such a decolment. Now, Jones suggested that the COSO area absorbs differences in tectonic strains between the area of west-northwest extension to the north left lateral strike slip motion to the south along the Garlock Fault, right lateral bending of the Garlock related to the Eastern California Shear Zone, and the rapidly departing Sierra Nevada block to the west. Strike slip. Remember, a lot of the earthquakes that are occurring, they said, in these areas, um, are strike slip earthquakes that are occurring as part of the sequence ongoing at COSO. I thought that was very interesting. And there's even more stuff that's interesting, guys. Such a regime, which is more nearly plain strain than the region to the north and the east, might provide a more favorable environment for volcanic processes than surrounding areas. Localization of strain that initiated magmatism, which is volcanic activity, could well have reflected the extensional step-over geometries of strike-slip faults crossing the region. Right there. It is possible, if I'm reading this right, that strike slip faulting in this area is what was causing magmatism in the first place. Possibly. Wow. Magmatic injections in the COSO area may have written, that, that would be magma intrusion, guys, may have originally resulted from a brittle and niche, look at this. Magma intrusion at COSO volcanic field could have resulted from a brittle initial response of the crust. Whoops of the crust to the complex tectonic environment. Wow. So we should see some type of magmatic response of the magma chamber to the activity that is occurring, especially if these earthquakes are strike slip and headed towards the northwest towards the magma chamber. I hope you guys are following. Go ahead and go back and reread it if, or re-listen to this video if you want. Uh, but I am going to post this in the description box below. This is on page 14, 13 and 14 of this PDF file. The injections along the lith lithospheric thinning under the Sierra would serve to heat the lower crust throughout the accommodation terrain, perhaps making this more pure shear model of deformation possible. I know I'm doing a lot of talking, guys, but this is starting to explain a lot. So the activity in the area, all the strong earthquakes, may not be caused by volcanic activity, but the strike slip motion towards the northwest, a lot of the energy heading towards the northwest, towards the magma chamber, could cause volcanic activity. The presence of an upper crustal magma reservoir situated 5 kilometers below the center of the modern COSO geothermal field has been confirmed using receiver function analysis. This reservoir is between 2 and 15 kilometers. That's a big difference, guys. I don't think they could, they could find out exactly how thick this magma reservoir is, so it could be... A lot of magma down there. But this reservoir is between 2 and 15 kilometers thick with greater than or equal to fa about 5% rhyolitic melt. Thinner or more mafic reservoirs require higher melt percentages to satisfy our observations. Receiver function modeling combined with move-out analysis has shown that a lower crustal magma reservoir is unlikely to underlie the coastal geothermal area. So there's an upper crustal magma reservoir near the surface, but not a lower crustal reservoir. However, however, that being said, a possible candidate for an upper mantle reservoir has been detected near 35 kilometers in depth. This mantle reservoir probably feeds the crustal magma body with periodic injections or continuous flows and dikes less than one kilometer in width. Strain localization in the shallow magma reservoir probably causes the coastal area to extend differently than extensional terraces, or excuse me, terrains to the north. Wow. Wow. So could that explain the outcome that we could see because of this tectonic activity occurring in the coastal volcanic field, especially when it, the majority of it is strike slip heading right towards the magma chamber? Very interesting, guys. Uh, thank you again, Scott, for giving me this. We're going to take a quick look at the seismic data. I'm going to just spend a few minutes on it because uh, I want to look at a few other things about Hawaii and Yellowstone. Um, but this is pretty much it for right here. Again, I'll leave a link to this in the description box below. Here we are in the seismic program swarm with the most recent data from seismic station CLC and the CI network from this SCEDC data select URL builder from the data center for Caltech. Uh, broadband vertical dash dash location code because there's none given. Going to do a one hertz high pass filter because it's a broadband channel. 
Now, just first off, here is the, let's go forward. Do, 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 do. Let's see here. Uh, where is it? I think this is the, where to go? Oh, no, that's it. Okay. Here is some four shocks to the magnitude 7.1 that we saw the other day. And here's the 7.1 right here. Again, I showed this the other day. Very strong earthquake. This one's showing it going up to 115,248,000. 15 million amplitude count from this station, which is closest to the coastal volcanic field itself. So many aftershocks, so strong, you can barely tell them apart. Now, remember when they said there were so many, the data is so saturated, you can see why now they cannot report it all. It's just, I mean, really, you you could spend decades trying to report all of these earthquakes in the past few days. I mean, I'm talking, I'm going to say maybe now over 10,000, more than 10,000 earthquakes. Look at this. And this was just about 24 hours ago because a little less than 24 hours ago because right now it's 7.38 p.m. Pacific time, July 6, 2019. Look at all of these earthquakes, guys. Constant. Even let's try to find the most calm area. Let's go all the way down to the most recent data. Looks like this is the most calm area right here, and you can still see rapid fire succession of earthquakes all the time, constant, almost drum beats. Sometimes they do carry a rhythm, sometimes they do not. But you can tell constant, constant, constant. I mean, it, they just never end, guys. It's just, I mean, imagine having only like 10, 15 seismologists at hand and trying to report and locate all of these, guys. And this is just in, what, 15 minutes I just showed you? Look at all those. Look at that. Still a lot of earthquakes occurring as part of this sequence. This, this is about a few hours ago, I believe. Not seeing any low frequency tremor, which is a good sign. That is a very good sign. And sulfur dioxide emissions, which you can check on earth.noschool.net. If you click earth and then click chem and then click SO2SM, you can tell down near the coastal area, it's very minimal, if nothing at all. I mean, there's barely any SO2 emissions at all, which is strange given that the earthquake swarm in the coastal area is likely connected to the volcanic system. I mean, that's I think that's one of the reasons why they put out that alert update, the first ever for coastal volcanic field. Still going forward, still seeing a lot of earthquakes, guys. Look at all those. So they, they appear to be getting smaller and less frequent, but that's what we saw before the 7.1. So there still could be a bigger earthquake coming. Looks like activity still continues, guys. And that's it for right now for the coastal volcanic field area. Let's move on just real quick. Here we are at the seismic station TRAD in the HV network in the seismic program swarm, which resides on the slopes of Mauna Loa. I'm just doing this just to see if there were any spasmodic tremor events. I already know that there have been two that I did not report on. We did see some larger earthquakes in the Hawaii area. Nothing too, too crazy. Um, but as we could see right down here, let's see. Yep, we have another spasmodic tremor event. Pretty weak, pretty weak, but it lasted quite a while. And you, typical, another spasmodic tremor event, pretty strong, actually. This one was very strong. Uh, signatures are indicative of, yes, another spasmodic tremor event, which did was detected on seismic stations across the Big Island of Hawaii between July 4th and July 5th. Now, going forward, most recently, uh, last night, I believe that's last night, there was another spasmodic tremor event right here. So we had three in the past few days. I will do an analysis page on this probably tomorrow morning. Uh, yeah, and that's pretty much it right now for spasmodic tremor. O basically only three. And we see kind of a large earthquake right here. Uh, but that's pretty much it for spasmodic tremor. Only three in the past three days or so. Keep an eye out for an analysis page on that. It'll probably be up tomorrow morning or tomorrow night. Here we are at isthisthingon.org showing the seismograph stations at Yellowstone Caldera. Now we can see on all of these stations the teleseismic signature, or actually I don't know if it's more than 1,000 kilometers away from uh, Yellowstone. Is Ridgecrest, California more than 1,000 kilometers away? Because if for it to be a teleseismic signature on the station that recorded it, the event has to be 1,000 kilometers away or more. Um, but we see the signature from the magnitude 7.1 in California, which we should see on the seismic stations, of course. And notice that just a few hours after the 7.1 hit California, we did see a small earthquake swarm at Yellowstone Lake, which I will do an analysis page on tomorrow as well. So I got two analysis pages coming, showing some plots for these, uh, for the spasmodic tremor 
in Hawaii and the earthquake swarm at Yellowstone. And I'll include this tiny rapid fire swarm down here that only lasted a few minutes near the Norris area. So that's basically it. Let's take a look at Borehole 208 and just see what these earthquakes looked like since this was definitely the closest seismic station to this tiny earthquake swarm. Here we are in the seismic program swarm from data from Borehole 208 in the PB network. Dash dash location code short period vertical. Gonna scroll down here. We see the very strong signature from the magnitude 7.1 in California with some very strong lower frequencies as we should see. Definitely we should see some strong lower frequencies associated with the 7.1 in California compared to a station that's very, very far away, likely more than a thousand kilometers away. Let's add a frequency filter just so you can see how low these are. One hertz high pass filter to the eighth power. Check that out. We still see it. There's still some strong frequencies above one hertz. Very, very strong earthquake, guys. Very, 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 very strong earthquake. I pray for all the people in California that were affected by this event. Now, as you will see, a few hours later at Yellowstone Lake, we did have an earthquake swarm. Let's go to the spectrogram. It's another typical rapid fire swarm that we do see at Yellowstone Lake from time to time with a, with some good sized magnitudes. I'm going to say maybe this one, let's see, going up to, yeah, I'm going to say maybe magnitude 2.5, possibly, especially this one right here. I'm guessing this is probably a magnitude 2.5 as well. All of them have high range frequencies. Most of the rapid fire swarms do. But then again, you do not necessarily need volcanic tremor or low frequency events for there to be an eruption. I mean, I'm not saying eruptions coming for Yellowstone, you know, because everybody says it, even though there's so many other volcanoes out there that are just as dangerous, if not more dangerous. But the thing is, is volcanic tremor and low frequency earthquakes are common at volcanoes that erupt, but they're not necessarily required. It all depends on the type of rock below and the type of magma that is intruding into the crust preparing for an eruption. And there we have that rapid fire swarm. Multiple events, guys. Many, many, many events. Take your part, I'm going to say probably, let's see, 737 UTC to about 808 UTC. So what, no more than half an hour maybe? Maybe a little more than half an hour? That's pretty much it for Yellowstone right now, guys. Let's go see if anything else has occurred while I've been recording. Here we have the coastal volcanic field. Still 1,471 earthquakes just in the past 24 hours. Just the ones that they have been able to record. And as you can tell, there are a lot they are not able to record. So... That's pretty much it for right now. I hope you guys enjoyed that publication. Again, look in the link uh, in the description box below for the Coastal Volcanic Field publication talking about strike slip mechanics and how that could be related to volcanic activity in the coastal area. Again, thank you, Scott, for sending me that link. It was pretty cool. Starting to gain a little bit bigger of an understanding of the coastal volcanic area, which actually possibly has an upper mantle reservoir. So, and I don't think they can map much deeper than that. So is it possible? The coastal volcanic field area is a mantle plume volcano, or at least is caused by some heat coming from the magma and not regional tectonics. Because there's two things that cause volcanoes in the world. Regional tectonics, like from the subducting process of the plates, and mantle plumes from heat coming up from the mantle. I hope you guys have a great day. Enjoy your night. God bless, and I will be back soon. See you later.